Hi everyone, we are Team Q and our project was a hybrid rocket engine. Our team is composed of six people. Early on in the development, we chose roles based on what each of us wanted to focus on for this project. Rafi is a controls lead. He worked with actuators and circuits in our system. I am the project manager. I handled organization and systems engineering. Conrad is the chemical lead. He did most of his work with propellants. Ariel is a mechanical co-lead. He focused on the combustion chamber and the 3D modeling. Michael is also a mechanical co-lead. He focused on the test stand. Arvin is the dynamics lead. He designed a nozzle and simulated the rocket thrust. The six of us are space engineering students. We are passionate about this field and working on a propulsion project was a valid experience for us. This presentation is about the hybrid rocket engine that we designed and the custom test stand that we built for it. We hope that it shall further interest in research in rocket science at York University. The project should create a continuing endeavor to be passed on to future undergraduate space engineering students. In addition, it works in line with the goal of training highly skilled personnel paramount to the future of the Canadian space industry. Currently, there is an emerging space launch sector in the Canadian space industry, especially in the small-scale rocketry field. The Launch Canada Challenge is an important actor here. We have worked with Adam Trumpour, its president, over the course of our project. There is a growing interest in rocket science at York University. Several student-led teams are working on rocket-related projects and some are interested in competitions with other universities. This project is one of the few rocket engines designed by undergraduate students at a Canadian university. Rocket engines are an essential part of the space industry. Businesses and governments increasingly depend on them. Coming across rocket engines is expected during the career of a space engineer. Therefore, it is crucial to harness experience and knowledge in this field as soon as possible. The main objective of this project was to design and fabricate a testable model hybrid rocket engine that shall produce thrust at a target value with an acceptable deviations over a predetermined time period. This means that we wanted to design and build a working prototype and then test it to validate our requirements. This video shows the assembly of our final design. We put in upwards of 1500 hours into this project. At the current time we are close to finishing and we hope to complete our work before the end of the summer if the context allows for it. Our final design is expected to produce around 500 newtons of thrust. This number was obtained from simulations done with rocket propulsion analysis. We are using acrylic as our solid propellant and a gaseous oxygen as our fluid propellant. The image here shows several of the main components of the project. The ones here are the combustion chamber and the injector bulkhead, the nozzle, the injector, and the acrylic tube. Not in this image is the igniter, the fluid propellant, and the fuel line. The engine is 19.5 inches long and has a diameter of 3.5 inches. It weighs around 9.4 kilograms. The combustion chamber encases our solid fuel and nozzle, ensuring there are no unintended leaks. It was manufactured from a single stainless steel tube, allowing for a simple but affordable design. The acrylic fuel and graphite nozzle are slid into the chamber and held in place with a retaining ring. Our injector bulkhead was manufactured from a stainless steel disc and uses two O-rings to prevent pressure leaks. It has 12 screw threads to fix it into the combustion chamber, and our valve connects to the bulkhead using an NPT thread, making sure our oxidizer does not escape. The nozzle design of a rocket affects key performance parameters like fluid flow and thrust. Our nozzle was carefully designed to simplify manufacturing and optimize performance for 500 newtons of thrust at ground level. The design process was iterative, initially based on textbook fluid flow equations and later using simulation software, RPA, which is common for amateur rockets and for professional baseline designs. The final design is a conic nozzle with 15 degrees divergence angle, an expansion ratio of 1.87, a specific impulse of 241 seconds, and a nominal thrust of 497 newtons. The next subsystem is the injector, which consists of an Arduino controlled servo motor, an in-house design housing, and a switch lock ball valve. As seen here to the left is our initial design, and to the right is the final assembly, which we managed to manufacture as design almost to a T. Our injector was made to emulate a typical rocket engine's injector plate, which typically consists of rows of concentric holes, each providing jet impingement points to achieve high flow rates. We opted to simplify this function by simply increasing the pressure differential between the inlet and the outlet of the valve right before the combustion chamber. 
Mainly, this is achieved through geometry of our fuel line and the high pressure output setting at the fuel site using a pressure regulator, which is not pictured here. As of now, successful one-off functional tests of each component have been done. However, we have yet to finish iterative tests to a level that would satisfy our initial testing plans. Next, we have the ignition subsystem. We decided to use a high voltage igniter method as its components are readily available and as we are very familiar with its inner workings, as opposed to other typical igniter types such as the pyrograin. This method also introduces the least amount of residue to the combustion chamber before and after ignition. Using a simple transformer circuit connected to a pair of copper wires, we are able to produce electric arcs at the open wire ends, which we would use to combust a small patch of finely graded steel wool. This initial combustion in a highly oxidized environment of the combustion chamber will then provide enough energy to start the combustion of our solid fuel. Similar to the injector, component testing have been completed for the ignition subsystem. However, we have yet to reach the level of successful consecutive tests that we had originally planned. For the propellant, or fuel as some may call it, of the engine, it is required to have a solid component and liquid component. The liquid component can be a liquid or a gas. It is called liquid fuel because the gases are usually stored as liquids. As our solid fuel, we selected acrylic, as seen on the right here, as it is cost efficient, easy to acquire, and easy to store compared to our other options of paraffin wax and HTPB, also known as hybrid rocket fuel. We chose oxygen for our liquid fuel as it is pretty cost efficient, relatively safe to handle with proper training, and much easier to get compared to nitrous oxide and high concentration hydrogen peroxide, which is not the stuff you can buy at Shoppers Drug Mart or Walmart. Lastly, our fuel grain, which is the shape of our solid fuel, is tubular, which looks like a normal pipe. We went with this because it creates an even burn and it is easy to make, whereas our other options were rod and tube, which is a pipe with a rod down the middle, or a star shape. The test stand was designed so that the rocket could be held in place during firing so that we could obtain a thrust reading. The structure of the stand is made from aluminum tube, which was easy to cut and was light. The dimensions of the test stand are 25.5 by 12 by 13.5 inches. Attached to the test stand are U-bolts which allow the rocket to travel horizontally and at the front of the test stand is an S-shaped load cell which uses piezo resistors and a Wheatstone bridge circuit to measure the thrust from the rocket. The static firing test was planned to be the week of March 23rd under the supervision of all our team members and supporting professors. The test was the final step for our capstone as it would be the first time the performance of the rocket would be tested. The test would consist of two different 10 second burns. The main points of this test were to obtain a thrust reading during firing and to demonstrate the restartability of our hybrid rocket. Many of our requirements would be validated during this test and it would mark the conclusion of the project. Due to the circumstances, we were unable to secure a testing facility before the shutdown, but we are hopeful as a group that there is time in the summer to complete this test. Our project is extremely close to completion, with less than a week of work from the final product. During the design process, we have made local connections with other teams and individuals that want to advance rocketry in Canada. We have learned foundational concepts around rocketry that we can pass to future students, in the hopes that they can go above and beyond what we have started. We hope that our final design and test results can be used to pave the way for future amateur rocketry at York. Future capstone teams can have similar design projects as us with our precedent establishing a reference for project scope and safety regulations. We also hope that our rocket engine will inspire future students to take an interest in rocketry. Right now, the Canadian space industry is lacking launch vehicle specialists. Through collaboration with groups like Launch Canada and the York Rocket Society, we can pass down our skills learned with this project to future amateur rocket teams, encouraging the success of Canadian amateur rocket teams and future professionals. Just to talk a little bit about our team during the project, we were able to get along very well as seen in these photos. As we all had our own specialties, we had good team chemistry that allowed us to work efficiently. Our team bonding included going out for food and drink several times. We used these opportunities to sometimes hold meetings and get past any barriers we were encountering. The photos shown here are from working on the project and a trip to Quebec we did for another project. Thank you for your time and watching our video presentation.